Hey everyone, and welcome to Backseat Sports. So this is not the normal intro, because real quick, I have to say before this video starts, that Graham Mertz just tested positive for COVID, and he's waiting confirmation of that test. Caleb and I recorded a breakdown and a prediction, of course, assuming Graham Mertz was gonna be playing against us, but because of this report with Mertz, and the potential that he might miss the game against us. We're gonna wait to do the predictions video until Wednesday just because of scheduling for us. And probably by the time you watch this, the news will already be known whether or not he's gonna be playing or not playing. Either way, that's why we had to wait for it. And that video, the predictions video will come out on Wednesday as a separate upload. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this upcoming video. Let's get right into it, let's go. Hey everyone, and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh, that is Caleb. And guys, week one is in the books. For Nebraska football for college football in the Big Ten obviously did not go our way not the ideal week but at the same time kind of what we expected Caleb how you doing I mean obviously I could be better but <laughs> <laughs> we could have won the game but it's about it what was expected maybe a little bit better than expected um, and a lot of really interesting things to talk about obviously in the the beginning parts of the season there's a lot of moving parts that we just really don't know until we got to see it on yeah game day and so that was really there's exciting. a lot of positives and some obviously some negatives because we lost. But uh, I think there was some good things moving forward. And I think there should be cause for hopefully some excitement. Yeah, I, I, I really think so. I mean, basically in this video, we're going to be going down with the, the breakdown to kind of the Nebraska Ohio State game, things that we learned about the team heading into week two. Obviously, the, because like Caleb said, it was our first week of college football. We have so much to like kind of explore with this team. With that said, this, this Ohio State game, I mean, we kind of all came into it assuming that, you know, it was going to be a tough one for Nebraska, and it definitely was, although it did not start out that way. I mean, up until about three minutes left into the second quarter, it was a game. We were in it, and I think every Husker fan was pretty energized, really excited about how the team was looking as a whole. The defense was keeping Ohio State in check. The offense was having a little bit of success when we weren't penalizing ourselves. It was really exciting until it all fell apart at the end of the second and at the beginning of the third. Yeah, that was definitely a very frustrating sequence. You know, Ohio State scores that field goal and you feel really good about it, actually. Uh, they had, they penalized themselves there to pretty much, they had to kick the field goal to take the points to go ahead. And you felt good about that. And then we get the ball and a delay of game penalty yeah. right out the gate with like, three minutes left and we have timeouts. Yeah. That was extremely extremely frustrating it was on the coaching staff it was on the leaders of the team that was really frustrating and yeah um the biggest mistake of the game in my opinion uh that right there set us up you know not for success i totally agree with you that that drive was the definition of the game i mean we had the penalty and then got sacked twice and then we had to punt gave ohio state the ball on our side of the field with plenty of time left to score, they score. Then they come out of the first half, or the, into the second half, score again, so that the three-point game quickly turns into a three-possession game. And basically, then we have turnover, another touchdown, and then it's all over at that point. The game's already out of reach. So it was just a quick landslide of points from Ohio State that really flipped the game on its head. And why it didn't feel like it was as bad of a loss as the scoreboard said because we were in it for almost the whole half of the game. We knew that it was gonna be a mistakes thing. It always is with a really good team or any team. It's always about mitigating those those mistakes and yep. we just could not. And we, had we shot penalties. ourselves in the foot as we seem to do a lot. I felt like yeah. we cleaned it up a little bit last year, but you know, to again- to First have game the, of the those, year. Yeah, to again, just have those mistakes. Definitely sucked. Not saying that we would have won, but I think we could have at least pressured them for, for a lot longer and you know, getting them into those later quarters. I do want to talk about like our offense starting off on that side of the ball and how we move the ball against Ohio State. Then we'll talk about the defense and kind of go on that route. So offensively, like you mentioned, the passing game kind of is the first thing that comes to mind with the issues in this game. The plan did not seem to be to pass the ball down the field. It seemed like we were very willing to take the underneath, try not to pass much at all in the game. Quarterbacks were 16 for 20 on the day, but we only threw 20 times. And it was basically all within like 10 yards, 15 yards down the field for the most part. Not very many strikes outside that 15 yard mark. We had basically no passing game down the field whatsoever. I felt like we really rarely took those shots. And the one time we did, you know, it, it was almost uh, an interception. Yeah. I felt like the only times we were kind of willing to do that was with some tight end stuff. 
Yep. Um, you know, there was a couple catches. There was a catch by Stoll. Obviously, he got hurt there. And then a couple by Allen. But besides that, we really didn't have many long field targets, you know. And that's that was only like 15-yard throws. So. Yeah, we had two completions that ended up being over 20 yards. Yeah, one to Austin Allen and then one to Wandell. But that was because Wandell took it up the field. So I 100% agree. Not exactly what we'd love to see in the passing game. And that's going to be something we're going to talk about more with how we're going to open that up against Wisconsin. Of course, we had no Omar Manning in this game, which was a question mark last week when we were talking in our video about what was going to happen with him. And the news was pretty positive uh, up until basically Friday. And then we heard that he wasn't going to take the trip. We're like, what happened? And uh, he tweeted last, like on uh, Saturday night, that he was excited to get back to work on Monday to join the team again. But then he deleted the tweet. So not exactly sure what's going on with Omar Manning yet. Hopefully we have him for this upcoming week. We'll talk more about in a, a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, on the receiver side, like what are your thoughts on the receiving core with the rest of those guys? I mean, Wandell only had, I mean, six receptions isn't like bad, but I think we'd want to see him get more touches in a game here from here on out get the ball to our yeah. talented players he basically really didn't flash much at all you feel like he needs to have a couple like jet sweep tries yeah maybe maybe even just a straight up carry a screen pass for him like just a, a bunch of different things yeah you know six, again six catches is okay but i feel like you want him to be in that 10 to 12 10, range. 10 to 12 touch range yeah i agree yeah uh just because he is one of our more talented players you really got to get him the ball i mean yeah he had 50 yards on you know six catches it's not terrible but that's not anything that wandale is capable of and we definitely need to use them more again it, we did feel really scared uh the one frustrating thing on the wide receiver core i'd say is that that cade warner drop in the end zone yeah you know well that missed uh, yeah the missed opportunity was, in the yeah. end zone <laughs> that was I, extremely frustrating like yeah. you need those points it's third and goal it's two captains with each other right. adrian and, is one of our team captains mm -hmm. and cade warner's the other one of our captains and Some, they can't communication yeah they can't communicate on the field for a really easy touchdown pass Cade was wide open wide open and adrian bulleted in there for no reason yeah and Cade couldn't catch it felt like that them as captains definitely needed to step up did Cade even catch a ball uh no he did not yeah so you're a captain you're named a captain you can't catch one football you can't get open enough that's bad or or, or the other captain can't hit you like that's frustrating so um, I like the guy. I love his mustache, but you, know, you need to be more involved. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% true. Again, we're, we're going to have to talk more about which wide receivers are going to have to step up here in week two against Wisconsin. But uh, we definitely need to see more from those guys as a whole. The quarterback situation. Obviously, we were pretty hot with, with, the, with the takes on Martinez going into the season with a little bit of a lack of confidence uh, in what he could do on the field. But realistically... He had a pretty decent game. Of course, the fumbles from both Martinez and McCaffrey really, really hurt and uh, put the put the game out of reach for us. I mean, both quarterbacks so showed some flash. Martinez seemed more decisive, uh, more accurate overall on on in this game than he did last year. Even in the in intermediate short type passes, he looked significantly better in this first game, which is good to see. Still not like the high upside flashes that we would love to see from our starting quarterback. It seemed like Luke gave us a little bit more of that when he was on the field. Yeah, the way I look at this for the game one for our evaluation, we the one thing we did get to see out of both of them was their running capabilities. Yeah. Obviously, Luke looked like the better <laughs> runner. He got like, he actually got the actual carry, which yeah, was he awesome got the lining up at running back. After that mishandle of the snap which was unfortunate on that second down yeah uh when adrian's getting his helmet retightened or whatever uh that third down run where he almost it's third and 17 and he almost gets the first down and oh. he plows over that linebacker that to me was the best run of the game from any player on the nebraska side of the field i think even better than the you know the 47 yard one yeah. I will say, speaking to that 47-yard run, and in general, I thought our blocking was way better by our wide receivers, our tight ends. For sure. I, it, that the was a real positive. physicality seemed there on, on both sides of the ball, but, uh, but yeah, specifically in this scenario with the blocking. That was one real positive, I would say, is that all of those guys looked like they were really ready. They wanted to hit. They wanted to block. They were excited to do it. And that was a real positive thing. That felt like a, a cultural thing. You know, again, Nebraska 
has in the past had really good blocking wide receivers so that turns a 10 yard play yeah. into a 15 17 yard play so that was a positive i mean but on I think- the offensive side i feel like the game plan i mean frost game plan was to not turn the ball over that was the game plan you know throw underneath don't take shots limit the opportunities that ohio state has to pick off adrian martinez and or luke mccaffrey obviously you're not trying to fumble the football that's that's the key and he was hoping that our defense could force some turnovers to give us a chance in this game it didn't happen on the defensive side we didn't throw any picks which i mean you know if we would have given an over under on how many picks we would have thrown we probably would have said like one and a half or two and a half would have been a pretty good line but we didn't throw a pick which is pretty exciting i think the quarterback yeah controversy I think that's, continues that's the tough to thing, though. bloom I think that's the tough thing is it, I would have liked to see more shots from both of them because for sure. how are we supposed to evaluate which is the better thrower? You know, Adrian was what, 12 of 15 and Luke was four of five. Like, cause yeah. they were all short underneath stuff. So, you know, I say Adrian had that nice throw on the run when he escaped the pocket, but and I that also was the saw, best throw of the game. But I saw some, some also some difficulty escaping the pocket. I felt that sometimes when it collapsed, I didn't like what I saw sometimes from him. Um, yeah, you but know, I mean, you, you do have to admit he played a way better game than I think either of us thought he would. That's not sure, but I think the game plan was pretty conservative. The only thing that I could really judge was the running, and I think Luke was the better runner. I mean, <laughs> where are you at with the QB controversy at this point, and how do you see it playing out here in the next few weeks? I mean, obviously the coaching staff wanted to get both involved, at least see them both running the offense a little bit in this game, and because of the scoreline, we got to see a little bit more Luke at the end of the game. Luke caught a pass. Luke ran the ball. I right. think he's the he looks like the better athlete at this point than I, Adrian. Yeah. The longest throw was a Luke McCaffrey throw where he, you know, threw a 10-yard yep. pass to Wandale and he ripped off a few yards. They don't seem like they're that far apart in the passing game. And then that's why that's why your argument where like you do think that, you know, Luke is the better runner and the more explosive athlete that you'd rather have him at QB. But then you maybe someone could counter that because we don't have a lot of athletes around the field that you'd rather have the athlete out at a skill position while Adrian's at quarterback to maximize the talent that's on the field at once, which is maybe and that's what staff... I felt like the coach staff was definitely doing is they're yeah. like, well, Luke is really valuable because we don't feel like we have enough other weapons and we can use, especially him. with Omar Manning out there. He yeah. could definitely be like a Wandale type this year where, you know, or, you know, Taysom Hill, except can throw it better than Taysom Hill essentially. Um, yeah our wide receiver core is definitely still in question besides wandale what else do you have at this point uh but actually the tight end we have we have a couple tight ends that i think we can trust yeah. and, and the jack stole injury is is uh a definitely a concern about whether what that's going to look like it was hard to say and we didn't have any updates on it but uh we don't yeah. really know where he's going to be at moving forward at this point it feels like adrian's going to be our starting quarterback for sure for the wisconsin game and likely i would say likely for the northwestern game as well i don't know if it's fair to go farther than two weeks out at this point for any qb yeah. controversy because i i they do look think close. it's close pretty... i see why the coaches i mean did have some trouble but again yeah. uh, all we could judge was rushing both obviously looked very competent um mm-hmm. yeah, i mean adrian's and... touchdown run was nice and shifty to the outside on the edge at the bottom of the field so i mean there is upside there with both of these guys i think it is still to say about i 100 agree with the passing situation where that could be so i mean off offensive line i think overall husker fans should be pretty optimistic about the offensive line coming off of this game this could have gone a lot worse a lot worse <laughs> with an offensive line performance i mean thinking back to uh, last season I mean, we all know that Ohio State's defense was probably a little bit more talented last year, especially up front. I mean, it wasn't too bad. I would have been much more excited if in the second half we could have moved the ball like we did in the first half. For sure. For I sure. think a lot of the second half issues did actually stem from the O-line. It just, there was a lot of really big collapses. I, obviously, I think they were, that Ohio State was sending a lot more blitzes in the second half. Yeah, I mean, they started realizing that we did not want to throw the ball downfield. <laughs> And so, yeah, they'd stack the box, Yeah, which makes sense. And we didn't adjust for that. I felt like our O-line, if we would have had a good second half where we could have scored, you know, another 14 points, some, somewhere around there, I would be much right. more positive. We did see a lot more flashes of we can be sustainable. I would, I'm definitely for much sure. more positive than I was and last year. Where Bryce I felt like Benhart we, he looked great. Looked good. Yeah. 
at right yeah. tackle starting for his first his first start of his career you know 6'9 330 pounds and he made his debut really really looked positive it moved Farniok inside to right guard you had Farniok and Ben Hart on that right side of the offensive line and and honestly it worked pretty well I'm pretty excited about that I mean we both talked about how much Farniok did not look like a tackle last year he looks like a guard he plays well, like a guard and so I think I feel a lot better about him at right guard now you know really on the inside of that line Damn anchoring it so i think i can be very excited about this offensive line moving forward especially as we get a little bit farther into the year you know bo wilson had his problems but there was also a couple plays where i was like wow he would go they just looked a lot smarter than they did last yeah. year like he went and blocked a guy uh to give us extra time um on a on a throw play like like a, they just seemed a lot more coherent cohesive work together they understood kind of what was going on a lot more and yeah. I felt like they met the challenge and they really wanted to hit some people. And I agree. Uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely positive. I think it can be a lot better than last year. I mean, overall, I think we both feel pretty positive about it. I mean, Diedrich definitely struggled. Whenever the quarterback wasn't keeping it, it was a problem. And Diedrich was not having anywhere to go. But on the game, we had 5.8 yards per carry, um, 36 attempts for 210 yards. And even if you take away Luke's 47-yard attempt, we still average 4.7 yards per carry. So that's really positive, I think, on the year to see the success that our, the success that our quarterbacks had carrying the ball. And maybe you can chalk it up to the talent of Ohio State to get to the edge and prevent Diedrich from finding anything going on the outside because he was getting mobbed in the backfield, especially in that second half, <laughs> trying yeah, to get again, to the outside. Ohio State knew we were going to run. They were daring us to throw. We would not do it. That wasn't really Diedrich. I still saw some good things from him. I saw some good runs. I thought yeah. Ronald Tompkins looked um, okay as well. 100%, 100%. So let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. I mean, overall, obviously, I think that the, the day was highlighted by the ejections. Of course, great, great. Cam Taylor Britt ejected on a targeting call that was a little fluffy, if you ask me. And Deontay Williams was ejected on, in my opinion, an even worse call with a shoulder straight to the chest. It was a big hit, but big hits nowadays are targeting so i mean to it be was fair a great to hit. be fair like that hit, <laughs> i was so hype after that hit and then they threw the flag like yeah you know they were going to catch the ball that was going to be field second in completion you know of yeah. the day was was that hit and <laughs> to then be it gets fair away. deontay williams probably deserved a targeting call a little bit earlier in the game when yeah, he on Alave, decapitated holy. chris Olave, dude I, and he, it, he deontay went unconscious williams gets for a me second. really hyped yeah so Man, he's a safety he wants to he wants yeah. to make the hit he wants to punish you for catching that football he wants you to make think twice about it if you catch it in the middle i'm excited it really sucks that he's not playing so and the cam one is again even worse it, it's so. possible that these these one of them or both of them could get overruled by the big 10 and there's a chance they could still play but i'm not expecting either of them to be there for the first half of the wisconsin game which absolutely sucks um, considering Cam is debatably our most talented defensive player, Deontay seems to be our hardest hitting defensive player. And uh, <laughs> we're not going to have either of them for two quarters against Wisconsin. And then defense, and then defensively, I think as well, a little bit worrying on some of these third and longs that Ohio State was converting. But I mean, again, that's what Ohio State does. So it is tough when you're playing against such a good team, whether or not this is a weakness of your team or a strength of Ohio State, especially when it's in your first game of the season. But that was definitely a problem throughout the game. But I think the physicality and speed of our defense looked improved as a whole. Boodle looked good again. Uh, yeah. He obviously he had that touchdown breakup pass. Like the only, again, the only incompletion that Justin Fields had is he had to work for it. So Boodle's gonna be, again, a really solid guy for us and definitely felt like deserving of that captain spot. You know, frustratingly, though, Colin Miller looked like the worst linebacker on the field. <laughs> just he would he so many times yeah. had Justin Fields and he just took a horrible angle. looked so slow, looked uh, yeah, athletically that was one specific touchdown. That was horrible. On um, a couple. There was two times where he just yeah. took a terrible route. He over pursued on holes. He didn't fill his gaps. I mean, I get it. It's tough. It's Ohio State, but he looked like the worst linebacker I that mean, we had. That was our worry going into the season. We we both circled a massive circle around Colin Miller about like what and is he this got going the to look captain like? spot. Can you explain that to me? I mean, he's a nice dude. He's actually really energizing. His press conferences, he's pretty cool. Yeah. But 
I mean, I mean, he physica- sounds great in the press conference. That's true, but but when it comes to pass coverage and getting to the outside, I mean, I get it. He's a middle linebacker, but come on, <laughs> like. But then why was he? Oh. Then, I mean, why was he on Justin Fields at times? I mean, yeah, like, he was the one getting let. Well, it's con- because contained. we. It's because it's because Ohio State has so much athleticism at the slot receiver. When you have and so much athleticism across the field, that Will Honus is the more athletic guy. So when there's a skilled guy out there that he has to go and mark. It's him. And we had no interest in running single high safety throughout the game. And so, no. and so, <laughs> why instead not, of, Josh? <laughs> well, I don't know. And so, instead of letting a safety a cover the slot guy, you? right, instead of letting a safety cover the slot guy, maybe that's showing Braxton Clark's absence. That instead of running like some sort of nickel package, playing single high safety, we, we're not, we don't feel comfortable having Deontay Williams or uh, Markel Dismuke come and defend a slot receiver. So we're sending Will Honus out there to defend the slot receiver, leaving Colin Miller kind of all alone. You know, those are types of some of the, the problems that we were having in the middle of the field. And that was the success that Ohio State had was emptying out the middle of the field and letting Justin Fields run the ball. Justin Fields obviously torched us. Yeah. Uh, for like 50 yards. I would say that our linebackers do look better than last year though. For as sure. a whole, I for thought sure. like Will Honus and Caleb Tanner looked pretty decent. Yep. I thought they could get into the quarterback and get sacked. That was really exciting. Last year, we felt incapable of getting pressure with our linebackers. If we were going to have a blitz, it was going to be a safety blitz because that was the only way. Right. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Because our Literally. linebackers could not shed blocks to get in. Um, so that was nice. We saw it multiple times. We saw some mesh uh, blitzes uh, with our linebackers. Yeah. It looked, they worked well. And, um, you know, just hats off. It felt nice. Uh, we got some tackles for loss, which we, again, felt incapable of doing. Yeah, we had six. Linebackers. We had six tackles for loss and three sacks, which was actually more tackles for loss than Ohio State had on us. So that's a pretty, I think, exciting stat for our defense as a whole. Will Honus had two sacks. Caleb Tanner had a sack. Colin Miller had one and a half tackles for loss. Ty Robinson had a tackle for loss. So we had some success getting to the backfield and we really weren't blitzing more than ever six. We never, ever brought seven. We only brought six a few times. Um, so we were having success rushing four or five in a lot of in a lot of instances. There were a few moments, though, where Justin Fields had all day. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I mean it's yes. going to when happen. We did not, we did, we did not get creative when we just sent three or four. It was bad. Justin Fields had time and a half. He surveyed the field and he would do what Justin Fields right. did the whole game and was very, very accurate and would torch us for 15, 20, 30, 40 yards. Yeah. I mean, oh. again, when it comes to game planning, just like our our offensive side, we weren't taking very many risks. Defensively, we were not taking risks. Like I said, no, like basically running cover two all game long with this both safeties up high to give our corners as much help as they needed. So Keep, much cushion. And we were giving of, of 10 everywhere. yards of cushion half the time, at least six or seven most of the and time like, it'd on be these third guys. and four and we were giving 10 yards of yeah. cushion yeah because we did not want to give up a touchdown and, and like again, obviously that's frustrating but again i don't know what you're supposed fields, to do when their athletes are so good right and that's why field picked us apart 20 for 21 because we gave him so much space to work with underneath and he was taking it you know i mean we only gave up one big play over the top that was garrett wilson's touchdown but again garrett wilson and chris olave are two incredibly talented wide receivers I mean, that's I why it's kind of hard to gauge how good our secondary actually is because of how conservative our game plan was and because how good of a core ohio state has we were not willing to take those matchups to take those one-on-one matchups no we wanted no. to slow the game down we wanted to at least you know have ohio state take some time have to make some drives we didn't this we didn't want to have two three four play drives against yeah. ohio state we wanted to make them earn it a little bit and um yeah that's tough but that's just that's what the game plan was for right. them and, and once we lost cam and deontay williams i mean at that point we were we were playing about as soft as it gets in that second half without those two guys there and like at that point it just felt like we were just you know minimizing the damage defensively and trying not to show too much for wisconsin and i think that's kind of what our second half kind of ended up being after it got out of hand again it's frustrating but this is the best team we're gonna see all year yeah. by a mile after what we saw in the big 10 yesterday with uh ohio with, with iowa going down and with penn state losing and with 
with and with Northwestern dominating, there was just a weird day with Minnesota losing to to Michigan. I mean, I Ohio mean, State though, still at the end of the day, is going to feel like by far and away the best team in the Big Ten, and it's not even close. So yeah, like Minnesota with, did not look like the same Minnesota. No, which is very year. exciting. And uh, yeah, I mean the other aspect, special teams again, I looked improved. I mean, our kicking game, specifically punting, was really good. And we yeah, did, we had a punt stop at the one yard line. Yeah, and our punt coverage was very solid. And we on our kick return game, we finally decided just to call fair catch every time. Thank goodness, this is what we were saying to do last year because we had a holding call or a block in the back on like every, every kick return time. last year. And so that was nice to see that we just decided, all right, yo, we're just gonna get the ball at the twenty five yard line, no biggie. Let's just call fair catch. So um, overall, I was pretty optimistic coming off this Ohio State game, heading into this Wisconsin game. So since we had to cut the video in half because of the Graham Mertz news, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, drop your comments down below about your thoughts about the game. And it was a ton of fun seeing what Nebraska football could be this year since it was the first game of the year. So I really do hope you guys enjoyed the video. And we are both excited to see your comments down below. But as always, I'm Josh. That was Caleb. This is Backseat Sports. And guys, we will see you next time. We out.